Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I thought I would look at um, last week's trade ideas and see how they're doing as, as far as maybe some trade ideas for next week. And then after that I thought we would talk about the importance of, of managing a losing trade. Um, so let's get started. <clears throat> so basically every week I'll post a cash secured put scan on my website. I'll also take a, a picture of this and post it on Facebook groups. and. Normally at the end of the week on Saturday, I'll go back through and I'll, I will look at all of these and see which ones were losing trades and which ones were winning trades. Um, and we can actually do that right now on the Thinkorswim platform. This is last week's scan. Um, and it found 122 contracts, I believe. And we can see right now only, I think it's about 10 or 12 of them. Uh, the ones highlighted in blue are actually in the money. So these are going to be our losing trades that we found last week. Um, everything else in here should be a winner. So we, we had a really good week this week, I would say. And if, if we want to look at a couple of these, like say CWH here, we had the 44 put and we can see it's trading at 40. So the bid of 330 means it's roughly about $3 in the money, three to $4 in the money if we look at the bid to ask here. Um, AA Alcoa we had the 38 put and the 3750 put and we can see that we're at 36 um, going back to the CWH So the CWH44 put was trading between 65 and 80 cents last Saturday. And it's currently at 340. So that's going to be our biggest loss. But so that's well over two to three times loss. It's actually closer to about a five times loss. <clears throat> But anyway, we can see that the scan worked really well this week. Um, like I say, I, it found it right at, I think it was 122 contracts and roughly only two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 11 of them right now are actually in the money. Um, so that's really good. Uh, if we want to look at next week's scan, it's right here. It's bringing up roughly 56 at the moment and that could change. And what I'll do is actually after the close, I'll take a screenshot of this and then I will post them for, for next week on here. Um, but if we wanna go ahead and look at uh, some of these trades here, um, and also if you wanna build this scan, um, in my very first video, I showed pretty much how to build this exact scan. It's not very hard to do. I'll try and leave a link to that. So if we look, uh, it's basically 1% to 2% return per week. Um, and at the top, we have roughly Riot here, 2% with an 11 delta. If we go to the bottom of the list, we have Tesla, the 545 put with a 19 delta paying right at 1%. Um, we have uh, QS uh, with an 11 delta paying 1%. And I'll sort these by alphabetical order and just scroll down real slowly. And you can just feel free to maybe pause the screen. And I will also post these um, tomorrow or over the weekend uh, on my website right here. I also have a Patreon where I post this stuff as well. I've actually been posting um, covered call scans um, on here. So that would be some trade ideas for next week. And the next thing I want to look at is what I feel is the importance of managing a losing trade. So if we go A 
Okay, April 23rd here. We can see this week we had roughly a 90% success rate at picking our contracts. We only had three losing trades here, but the th two of the three losing trades were, um, I think one of them was 700% and the other one was nearly 1,000%. The Peloton here, let's see, it was a 110 put, 23rd April expiration. So we can see that we actually closed that week at 101. And we sold the 110 put for $100, so we would have had to buy this back for almost $1,000. So that would have been a $900 loss. Um, and then PIN was the 95 put. And this is also the same week, uh, the 423 expiration. So on 423, it closed at roughly $90, $89 a share, really $90 a share. And I think we had the 95 put there. So that would have been a $500 loss. So in these two trades alone, we had $1,500 worth of losses. And and that's taking max loss. Or that's basically an unrealized loss because you would have been assigned on the shares. But we can also see that The stock has just kept on dropping for both PIN. I'm not sure what Peloton has done. It looks like it kept dropping as well, it, but it is rebounding. It's coming back up. So you may be able to break even on this trade right here. But I, I feel... So on those, on that week, uh, 423, we had roughly $2,400 of premium that we could have collected, and we only collected $719. So that's roughly 30% of the premium available that week we collected. And this week still on, on paper, you know, 90% success rate, that looks really good, but we had two losers that killed it for the rest of the trades. And if we go to the next week here, this was 63%. Uh, we had 59 winning trades and 34 losing trades. And we can see all the losers here. We have a bunch of losers on this one, but they were all s smaller losers. I don't think there was any real large losers this week. But in this week, and since we had so many more contracts that we could trade, this week actually made more money than the other week, even though it has uh, a far lower success rate. So what, what you could do is possibly just try to roll this as soon as the stock starts to drop. And I realize that's easier said than done because if we, actually both of these trades we probably would not have entered because this would have been Monday. We ran the scan in between this time here. So realistically, I'm not sure if you would have even tried to, to sell that. If you did, you would have went farther down here to sell it because we run the scan on a Friday looking for trades to enter on Monday. So, you know, this has already dropped down pretty far. So this one here, it actually opened um, at 99 and closed the day at 93. And I think our 95 put was the one that we uh, would have traded this week. So really, once once this got to 
down to 95, you know, we would have taken a huge loss. And this, this is actually Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This was Friday. So if we would have opened this trade on a Monday, you know, it's possible that we could have rolled it um, that day. So let, let's see what it would have looked like to roll that day. So at the end of the day on Monday, <clears throat> that 95 put would have been trading between 390 and 410, and we would have sold it for $100. So you know we're already out huge on our loss right there. Just starting off on Monday, that's just I almost kind of look at that as just bad luck. You know we we have 30 other contracts we could have chosen and. And we would have chosen the one major loser on Monday. But if we did want to roll it, so we're looking at 390 to 410 at the end of the day, day on Monday for the 95. Let's say if, even if we, if we went out the next week, the 95 is trading for roughly 500 here, so we could have gotten $100 credit rolling to the next week. Um, but Normally when I like to roll, I like to roll farther out and go down in price. So we could have actually rolled to the 90 put, and uh, and this is one month out. We could have went to uh, the 90 and collected 590. Um, so we would actually... So we could roll down... To the 90 put and we would collect roughly a $200 credit as well and that's going out 32 days and that would give us the 90 strike price and I really don't know so but still you know the, the stock is still dropped we're at now $77 on the stock so we would have to kept rolling so let's here let's actually just kind of look at this So first what we're going to do, just bear with me for a moment here. So we're going to sell, we're going to act like we, we've sold the 95 on Friday for 97 cents. And then on Monday, we're going to buy that contract back for 410. And then we're going to go out and we're going to sell the 90, which is going to be a month out for 590. So it still shows us down huge. So let's look at what the stock kept doing. So once we broke down below 90, we went to 84 on the sixth and 
we have the 90 foot. So it would have 15 days left. We would have to buy that back on the 6th, and we're roughly 845 now. So let's say we went out 43 days, and we have $800 worth of credit. Or We're having to buy this back for 800 so we want to try and spend around that same price. So that's the 90. We could go to the 85, and this is 43 days out now. This is June. But rolling this, <clears throat> we're not going to get a credit if we roll to the 85 put. If we went to July, we could get the 85 put in July and get more of a credit. So we'll try that and just see what that looks like. but we're still down because the stock's at 78. Actually, being that the stock was at 83 this day, we probably would not have rolled to the 85. We probably would have rolled to the 80, but we would have had to. We would have lost $100 right there just rolling to this. And we also have to remember that our original credit was just $100. So we just keep rolling this down the road really just trying to gain back this $100 right here as, as well as the the previous losses but you know this this started off as a $100 trade that's now it's it's basically just gotten over our heads and it may be flat right here I don't know what it's going to keep doing but otherwise it just shows that it's once you get in a losing trade it can be very difficult to get out of, especially if it just keeps going down and down and down. Yeah, you could have sold covered calls, but you're not going to do much better if you're selling covered calls because if we originally got into the stock at, uh, I think it was 90, 95, and now we're at 78. I mean, eventually you've got to just decide, do you want to cut your losses or do you want to just keep selling covered calls out here that are not going to pay anything? And that's if you got a sign on the first week as well. And even now, let's, let's say that we're holding this. If we go out 20 days, so we can collect let's just say today uh, one month out the 95 is 82 dollars 15 delta it's just it's <clears throat> it's hard to keep managing a losing position when it's when it just keeps dropping I mean I don't know how much longer I can sit here and look at this. So 
So making the adjustments that we have made here, basically we're going to be down roughly $625, and that was just those rolls that we did. Um, if we would have just held on to the 95 put, So if we were to hold on to uh, the 95 put, the stock would have been put to us at $95. And this is basically what our profit and loss graph would look like. So we would be down roughly $2,100 right now. And that's if we had done nothing. Um, just by rolling these trades here, uh, we're just down $659 now. And it's, like I say, it can be very difficult to, to try to roll out and saving a losing trade. And, you know, who's to say we would have done this? It's real easy to go back and, and now look at, at the future. You can't do that. You don't know what the stock's going to do. If you kept trying to just roll the 95 put out farther in time, I'm not sure that would have been any better. Um, at least this now, our, our cost basis, we've, we've rolled our 95 put down to roughly the 80. So anyway, I'm, I'm sorry if I uh, kind of uh, got a little bit lost there in, in my train of thought. But anyway, hopefully this may be helpful to some people. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.